this is an extremely important result guys so put star 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 by it I want to think back to the law of total probability presented in problem 26 this computes probability in terms of conditional probabilities we have an analogous result here for, for terms of expectations the expectation of a random variable x is um, maybe computed from the conditional expectations this result is known as the law of iterated expectations otherwise as a law of a total law of total expectations and other other names if we look at this it says if x and y are two random variables then the mean of x is equal to and then a quite an awkward looking expression on the right hand side looks complicated it's saying it's the conditional mean of x given y and then the mean of that so it's the mean of the mean of the conditional expectation of y I didn't like what I just said there because it sounds complicated now uh, so why is this thing useful well suppose I am interested in computing the expectation of x I could do it from like the definition let's say x is uh, discrete then you know what the formula is it's directly it's a sum of x times probability mass function but suppose I don't know what the probability mass function is then I wouldn't be able to work it out using that formula the other thing is suppose I knew what the probability mass function of x is still I might not go I wouldn't choose that route if I realize that expected value of x given y is at hand and often when you see these uh, when you're doing modeling modeling more than two or more variables you see that it's conditional expected value of x given y relates x and y as a function of y and uh, sometimes we have that it just falls out uh, from the structure of the model we don't need to we just need to use the linearity property of expectations we don't have do um, do sums and integrals and all that. The importance of it, let's do a Google search, this is what it throws up. You can see it's used in econometrics, time series, so in econometrics you'll be often interested in regression in conditioning on the regressors, so that's where the condition comes in there. Time series you'll be conditioning um, like AR, MA type models, you'll be conditioning on past observations. In each of these there is a natural there is a structure and we can use that structure to get the conditional expectations without messing around straight from the definitions of um, expectation in other words we don't need to know the um, probability mass or probability density function uh, of uh, x or x given y and that makes life so much easier let's try to understand this thing let's suppose x and y are discrete random variables then what this expression on the right hand says is this from the definition x I mean y doesn't have to be a random variable it could be some event so I say a1 a2 and so on it forms a partition of the sample space then the law of iterated expectations says this the interpretation let's go over interpretation of this is like to compute the mean of x it's it's uh, what it is it's a sum of the weighted average of the conditional expectations weighted by the probability of uh, the thing you're conditioning on so say if one of the y values had a higher probability of being observed than another y value then the first that one with the higher y value would be given more weight like um, conditional expectation of x uh, given that particular y would be higher uh, weighted than the other one. A quick example say I got two random variables I know I want the mean of x I know the conditional mean of x given y is 3y this thing must be a function of y because that's what this uh, it means to say conditional value x given y and I know the mean of y is 1. Uh, here I do not need to know, I've not been told the anything about the density or distribution function of x or y. Right, so using a lot of iterated expectations, write this down. But this expect mean of y, x given y is given here. So substitute that in, this is how I'm going to use it. And then I take the mean of that. So take the mean through the brackets, the mean of y. 
mean of y is 1, and that's it. So it's so much easier. We didn't have to use distribution functions, mass functions, anything like that. I uh, didn't have to integrate, do massive sums, or anything like that from the definitions, original definitions of the mean of x. And as I said, in statistical modeling problems, this thing here, typically you can just get it using the property of linearity and the structure of the model without having to integrate or messy, messy um, calculus. So that's expectations by conditioning. Let's prove it. I'm going to now, uh, let's prove it from the right-hand side going to the left-hand side and then left going to the right. Okay, let's start first then. We already said expected value of x given y is a function, some function of y, some measurable function of y. So I'm asked really to show is that the, this is the right-hand side is equal to the left-hand side. Okay, the right-hand side, this by definition is that g of y is by definition this, all right, this is using this right here. In other words, it's analogous to the expected value of x where we do it with probability of x and this is x given y so we replace probability of x by probability of this conditional probability. Now what do I do? I realize that the conditional multiplied by the marginal is equal to the joint. Think back to this relationship. Joint equals conditional times marginal. Then, going to this line, I've reorganized the terms and this is possible because the expectation are, exist, we're assuming that they exist. Now this here joint, I'm summing over y's and uh, for each given x and uh, this means that we get the marginal for x, marginal probability mass function for x. So going from joint to marginal, that's problem 25 if you want, some, want that explained. This is by, is that by definition. So we're done. Uh, just going back over here, some, I mean this involves a double summation of x and y. Some presentation you can see, it's e, just give one big sum sign and underneath it x comma y, which we understand to mean double summation. The continuous case, xy continuous, follows in a similar fashion. I'll just write it because it's an important proof. And um, replacing sums by integrals. Remember, this is short for minus infinity plus infinity on both of these integrals. All right, marginal time. Marginal times the conditional equals the joint integrating over y for x is given as the marginal probability density function for x. And so this times this times this times that is the mean of x. Now let's work from the left hand side and start from expected value of x. This is like the more natural starting point if we didn't know about this result I'm trying to think about is there kind of a shortcut to this thing? Um, knowing something about uh, x given y from the structure of the model. State that that's from a definition. Okay, now suppose we don't have this thing. We know something about x given y. Um, so we can get from here to x given y via the joint. So that's the path to here. This is equal to the thing in purple. Okay, the marginal is equal to the thing in purple. Just before that, uh, if we integrate this guy over y, we're going to get the marginal for x. From here, that's the joint is equal to product of conditional times marginal. And then just taking this particular term. This term here is the expected value of x given y, which is a function of y. So we're integrating some function of y, the PDF of y given y. Well, that is, by definition, this guy here. And g of y, we just replace what, what we um, you, uh, de denoted it by this thing here, conditional expected value of x given y, done. I want to return back to going from joint to this line here. Well, you might say, Phil, we know this 
using events eigen bees that that so why don't we swatch swip, uh, swap them around so instead of x given y do y given x and then y will be x like this where will this take us well this goes to here I just rearranging terms again and using prob property of uh, probability density functions conditional or con uh, or unconditional we know that if we integrate over all the outcomes it's going to come to 1 so then this is just integral of x fx dx which is expected value of x by definition in other words we've shown that the expected value of x is equal to the expected value of x which is true but not useful okay so uh, I'm sorry if I couldn't make that more entertaining but when you're going through something more technical like this you have to kind of focus a bit and then alright you're gonna sound a bit like a robot but that's like a, a price I have to pay um, this theorem is like x conditioned on y okay I've got through mean of x going through conditioning x on y um, so you can think of a model where I've got two random variables but how about model with more than two random variables in that case I might want to condition x on more uh, I can say I can say things about x given other events y and other events well we can condition on more than one event uh, or on more random variables and this result will still hold and that's where you get these things coming out in Google with nested conditioning sets with uh, multiple variables conditioning on multiple variables this is popularly got known by the tower property all right and uh, I'll prove that in um, a future video if there's interest I have done an example of the law of iterated expectations a practical one um, so you can see the power of it and uh, that's done in uh, let's see problem 66 this is problem 43 but I came back to making this after I made that. Okay, hope that helped.